Welcome back to Express IT Tech. It's been nearly six months since I reviewed the Ugreen NAS DXP4800 Plus NAS. And in that time, I've done a few upgrades. Moved it around the house a little for testing, uh, where it's lived within the office, but also been hidden in my server room. I've also done my fair share of software updates and wanted to cycle back and give you a six month review of where the current state of play is with the Ugreen NAS. What's changed, what's still great, or what's improved, but also is there still any pain points in its day-to-day -day use? So let's start by looking at what I've changed. Well, first of all, I upgraded the memory. No longer does it have a measly eight gig, it's now rocking 32 gig DDR5 out the bag. I've also chucked in some larger drives and set up the cache. But I've also chucked something on the front of the device and I've deliberately printed them in white so you can see them clearly. Now they don't come as standard, but they are a godsend when I have had the NAS in my office. And that's what comes down to the pain points. So the only real big, big pain point I have with this NAS is vibration. Now, not those good vibrations either. So gone are the days of the Beach Boys um, having a positive impact here. I thought at first maybe it was just me or maybe it was an older drive, but no, Bay 3 seems to suffer with it. And I did find a few people on the World Wide Web with the same issue. Now, thankfully, these do help. They don't fully solve the issue, but they do go a long way to solving the problem. Now, full disclosure, this has only been a problem that I've noticed when I have the NAS on a service that can't fully absorb vibrations. So when I've kept it on my wooden worktop here in the office, I've had this challenge. Now, you can absolutely go and get the files for this, and I'll stick the link in the description, and 3D print this, and it does make a significant difference. Now, the odd thing is it does seem to only impact Bay 3 on mine, and that's some of the feedback that I've seen in the community. So I ran mine for a month in the office to see the impact, and yes, it's now back in the server room upstairs. Now, it's not that loud to the point that I can't cope with it, but the hum from the vibrations was annoying enough that I had to put it, put it back up there out of the way. Now, that is the only, only issue that I've ever had with this NAS. And the rest, for this price point, is absolutely phenomenal for its value. Uh, you're not also locked behind that Synology paywall uh, for using other drives. So that's a massive, massive improvement over the Synology products. Um, and yeah, you, you can't really knock them for doing that. But if you also remember last time around, I mentioned the following in the Ugreen or Ugos software or Ugreen operating system that it couldn't quite do. Now, of the three, I can please to announce that two of them have actually been solved. So we've got encryption at rest, snapshotting, and iSCSI that I mentioned, and the former two have definitely been solved. And let's look at that right now. So let's have a look at what I'm talking about, what's changed. So let's just log in first of all. And the great thing is if I now go to control panel, click a bell, we'll be able to see what changes are actually happening here. Now you can see in here now that we're on this system version that has dramatically improved. You'll also see in this point here that I've also upgraded the memory. So I'm running two uh, 5,600 megahertz, 16 gig DDR5, which is recognized instantly. Obviously I've still got plenty of time uh, for my warranty. And the power time has only been reduced recently because I moved it back into the server cab. So that's why we're sitting as we are. Storage has been running absolutely fine, uh, quite running normal considering it sits in a little cupboard now. Never really had any massive issues with the temperatures, etc. And pretty much everything else is, is running as you would fully expect it to. Now, what I wanted to talk about is the fact that you can now solve a lot of these problems, not only with the App Center. So if we go into the App Center, we now have Vault, which gives us our encryption at rest. So if I just click on this, I'm not using it at the moment. 
Um, but basically, this enables you to do that encryption. So that does the job that I want it to do. Um, that's covered that one off. So fantastic. Great for you, Green, to actually listen to the community and kind of do those updates on there. But also snapshot functionality as well. So snapshotting is now on here. Um, again, great that you, Green, have listened to the community, taken that kind of view, and then made those improvements, which is also fantastic in itself. The other good stuff is, is obviously the App Store is growing slowly. Now, there is a couple of bugbears for me at the moment still that we don't get um, Plex. Um, however, obviously, Jellyfin is, is a better product in respect to the fact you don't need to pay for it. Um, however, it is a little bit more complicated to do that sharing functionality across uh, externally across the um, the internet, so to speak. But you can get around it with the likes of Docker. So I could absolutely install Docker on here, and it would do the same job. Um, but yeah, this is run seamlessly. Um, what I like about it is this does grow. So we've had a few new additions in here um, since last time, which is great. Uh, like I said, the actual updates in itself are plentiful there's there's quite often i when i log in to here there's a new update so that's always good to see that they're kind of evolving with the times um, it will be interesting to see where you green go uh, next with um this device and also the actual the software itself because one of the worlds of the oyster i suppose potentially with where this could actually go now it is closing the gap massively on um the synology operating system which is really pleasing um, from that respect, but also just the fact that um, you know they do they do seem seem to take the community's feedback on board. Annoyingly, at the moment, I haven't found iSCSI. Maybe it's been announced or released, and I just haven't seen it yet. But that's the one thing that's probably really holding me back. Fully, fully adopting this um, to do it with everything. Um, it's the one feature that's probably lacking. Would be an absolute game changer on here. And the reason for that is because I could absolutely then host Steam my Steam library on here um, rather than rather than on my own local device. Not that I would, but it's a nice feature to have um, in the bank. So what's my thoughts six months on with the Ugreen NAS? Um, again, like I said, it has been a very, very steady ship with Ugreen. They've actually navigated probably some very difficult challenges um with obviously some of the announcements from Synology about changing the landscape on their hard drive support it would have been very easy for Ugreen to follow some kind of suit and basically go down a, an almost proprietary route however being a new player in this game well not so much new now they've been around for nearly a couple of years in this space um it would have been a very foolish move now what obviously Ugreen have from a massive marketing selling selling point is the price to performance ratio and this far outweighs the likes of technology at the moment um, however it is an evolving landscape so you know there's there's other players in this game now uh ubiquity have released a new set on nas systems so it'll be really interesting to see um if you have that kind of solution where that falls in um and some of the others are starting to move with the times now there is hopefully in, in the not too distant future, a new range of Ugreen NAS is uh, set to be released, which may close that gap even more. You know, they may really stretch themselves to what a NAS device can be utilized for. One of the main features moving forward will be the utilization of artificial intelligence or large language models to do some uh, computations in the background to just help you as a user in your day to day life. But yeah, that's it. That's my six month review. I think the, like I said, the only massive feedback that I've got for you, Green, and, and what can be improved is with the later models that you do release on the new set of models that you release to really look at, you know, reducing that kind of vibration. Now, it might just be um, a fallout of trying to utilize some really clever, quick release technology um, within the actual device that's causing the problem. I'm not ascertained exactly what it is, but it does just seems to be the gap between bays two, three, and four 
that seemed to cause it on mine. Now, I was potentially convinced it was a drive to begin with, but then I moved drives about and still saw the same um, kind of outcome. But one thing you can also do is if you were to utilize it, say, in this office, is you could put just some acoustic padding underneath and that will completely remove that problem. It's just weird that I never really noticed it, obviously, when it was in my server cab, but that's because it's just running in a quiet location, um, almost in a vacuum sealed room, to be honest. So it's probably not something I noticed from day to day. But as soon as I got it back into this office, then yes, I absolutely noticed it. So it's just one of those things that, you know, from, from a feedback standpoint, if they can absolutely nail that with the latest incarnation of Ugreen NAS devices, then they have got an absolute worldie on their hands. Anyway, if you have liked this video, you know what to do. Hit the like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you next time.